while this generator looks like it belongs in a museum, you might have one just like it in your classic British car. And if that's the case, we have two issues. The first one is that these do occasionally fail like any other mechanical part of your classic car. And number two, unfortunately, the people who know how to test these are gradually going the way of the dodo. However, you can test your generator yourself. You can do it in your car without a test bench. Today, we're going to do two tests to show you how much you can learn with little or no official test equipment. Now, to avoid the noise and better show you what I'm doing, I'm going to work without the car. I'll be simulating what you will do with the generator installed in your car. Now, to begin, your generator has to be installed. So if it's installed, of course, it's going to have a belt on it. So I'm going to put a belt. There's always a lead going to the D terminal in the generator. We're going to put that on there. And there's usually a lead going on over to the F terminal. And that's on there. So this is the way it would be. It's, mol it's bolted to your engine, so she has ground. She has a belt which drives it. She's got a lead going to the D terminal. She's got a lead going to the F terminal. Now, if you haven't done so, it'd be a good idea to polarize your generator. It only takes about 30 seconds, and then everything is ready to go. So now let's have some fun. Let's see if we can test this using an old school method, and then we'll test it again using a method that isn't quite so old school. So the first test, let's imagine we're Fred Flintstone's neighbor, okay? I have no voltmeter, I have no ohm meter, I have no amp meter, I don't even have a test light. All I have is a question. Does my generator work? Let's find out. First thing first, turn the engine off. We're going to remove the belt from our generator so she's free to do what she wants. Also, on the back of the generator, the two wires, the one for the field terminal and the one for the D terminal, we want to remove them and get them out of the way. I personally like to bend them back and put some tape on them so they can't possibly get into any trouble. Now then, we need is a small jumper. We're going to use two jumpers to do this test today. One lead I'm going to connect onto the field terminal, and the other lead, the other end of the same jumper, onto the D terminal. Now then, it's connected to my car, so because it's bolted to my car, it has ground. I don't have a car here, so I'm going to give this a ground, but you won't have to do this when you do the test yourself, because being bolted to the engine, again, it'll have it. And the last thing we need is another jumper lead. This jumper lead needs current. Now you're saying, well, where are we going to get the current? I'm coming off of the battery here because, again, I'm not working in your automobile. But in your automobile, you want the other end of this lead to go to the brown wire that feeds your voltage regulator. So here I am. I've got power because I'm connected to the brown wire. I've got my jumper here. There's no belt. And all I have to do is touch one of these and watch up here. Can you see that? The generator is functioning as an electric motor. It works. What does that tell us? Well, that tells us that the connections in here between these terminals and where they have to go are obviously working. It's telling us that the connection between the leads and the field are good. The commutator and the bush over here are good. This all works. If this did not work, if this were dead, it wouldn't work in your car. If it does work, however, it brings another question up. Somebody might say, okay, I see that it's working, but how well is it working? Or does it work well enough? In other words, can we quantify how well this is going to function? And for that, we'd have to take a jump ahead in time. Let's go, for example, to the time of the Wright brothers. Let's say I'm one of the Wright brothers' neighbors. And I say, well, you know what? I, I don't have an amp meter. I don't have an oat meter. I don't have a test light. But I've got a voltmeter. That's all you'll need. With a voltmeter, we can make this happen. So let's go ahead and run a test now. This is going to be newer school with a voltmeter to find out not only if it works, because we know it does, but how well does it work. We're going to quantify how well it works. To do that, we need to put the belt on the generator. So the belt is on the generator and connected so that when the motor spins, this is going to spin. We will have taken the two wires off the back again, just like we did the first time, and get them safely out of the way so they can't get into any trouble. We're going to get our little jumper lead again, just like we did before. Connect the field terminal to the D terminal, just like we did then. And now we have to connect the voltmeter. And frankly, this confuses some of us. It confuses me. So let's see if we can understand how. Voltmeters tend to have two leads. One's black and one's red. Usually the red is positive, usually the black is negative. So let's pretend that we're testing a car which is negative ground. Okay, negative ground, negative black. Black goes to ground. So I'm going to connect it here. You can connect it to your block, you can connect it to any other part of this engine where you're going to get a ground. I don't even have to worry about the other one because it's the only one left, and I'm going to connect it right here to where one of my leads are. I'm done. But how about if somebody says, but my car is positive ground, and that confuses me. Okay, let's take the leads off. Let's assume we have a positive ground car. Positive ground, red is positive, red goes to ground. 
That leaves us with just one. We're going to connect it on there. Now then, we're going to go and we're going to set our voltmeter. Some of them have uh, automatic settings. You just put it to volts and it will adjust itself. Some of the older ones, you had to turn them to a preset setting. And if you've got one like that, you want to set it from 0 to 20 degrees, 20 volts, excuse me, 0 to 20 volts. And that's all you're going to do. We want to set our voltage, or excuse me, our idle speed in our car up so that she idles at around 859, maybe 1,000 revolutions per minute. No more than that. And this is important. Let me explain why. There's going to be a bit of residual magnetism in the field in here. So when the armature begins to spin, the little bit of magnetism will make a little bit of electricity, and it's going to come out through here, loop around, and go into the field, and come back in here again. And when it does, the field will be stronger. When she's stronger, this will become stronger. Stronger comes out, comes around, this gets stronger still. And you can see where this is going to go. It's going to spool up and up and up and up and out of control. This 12 volt generator will get to 40, perhaps 50 volts if you let it. That's really exciting, but it will destroy this pretty quickly. We don't want it to go up there. So by setting the idle speed, so she's only going to be like in the high eight, nine, maybe a thousand revolutions per minute. That's fine. Our voltmeter is here. We start our car. The motor settles out at idle speed. And all we have to do is look at your voltmeter. Okay, if we're getting 14 volts, maybe a little more than that, this is working great. We've not only proved that it works, it works well. We're done. But keep an eye on the voltmeter because if the voltage begins to climb 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 volts, 18, 20 volts, and everyone up in there, it's time to stop the experiment. We've already proven it works. You don't have to go any further. So what have we learned today? Well, we've learned that if we had taken this generator out of our car and taken it to a shop and we said, Please put this on your test bench for me. The guy in the shop would test it and he would say something like, it's dead. You're going to have to either service it or replace it. Fine. Thank you. Or he might say, this runs okay. This tests just fine. Qualifies just fine. But then you might say, that's not true because my car isn't charging. But the test bench just proved that it does charge. The professional just proved it. So now you're going to have to look at your wiring or perhaps your voltage regulator. You've done the same thing yourself. You've tested your own generator right in your own car. And you've proved that it's good. And if it's good, you can go ahead and leave it alone. It doesn't need any work and start looking for something else. So that's how we can bench test our own generator right in our own car.